down for me. Hi, this is Dickie Naidu Maynard, the director of the Puerto Rican Cultural Center. And today, if you have been following our Facebook video series, today I am in Cabo Rojo in front of a very important and beautiful historic site. And I'm standing here with David and Sandy Thule, a beautiful married couple and two people that I have known forever and just absolutely love. So, Sandy, can you tell me a little bit about what is behind me? This is called El Faro de los Morrillos de Cabo Rojo. Yes, it is a historic lighthouse. And I'm going to turn it over to David, the historian of the family. <laughs> and he's going to tell us a little bit about when it was built and how was it used back in its day. Okay, the... Uh... The, the uh, lighthouse was part of a program by the Spanish government uh, they undertook in the 1870s, 1880s, uh, putting up, they were constructing uh, lighthouses all around the island, ringing the coast. And uh, they, the plan, original plans were to have uh, each lighthouse have their beacon extend uh, far enough so that it would overlap with the beacon of the next lighthouse. Uh, down the coast. So that way, the all the critical areas, um, sections of the coastline would would be able to signal sailors uh, continuously. So the sailors would know exactly where they were in the water. Uh, they uh, Each uh, lighthouse, uh, just like uh, uh, many other lighthouses, they have what they call a day mark and a night mark. Uh, the uh, although the the architecture is very similar, there were some distinctive features for each lighthouse so that during the day, sailors could tell exactly which lighthouse it was, which lighthouse and what what uh, part of the, the island. Uh, so they would know where they were during the day and at night, the speed at which they would uh, turn the light would give them flashes at a particular uh, at a particular timing sequence and so at night they could tell one uh, one lighthouse from the other and know ex again exactly where they were. This uh, uh, lighthouse here in Cabo Rojo was built up on some beautiful uh, cliffs, couple about 200 feet high uh, cliffs, limestone and coral cliffs. The um, uh, it was built in 1881. They first lit it up in 1882. Uh, at that time, they would have used an oil lamp with a rotating lens around it. Mm. Uh, the uh, That was then uh, replaced with electric light later on and fully automated back in 1967. So there is no housekeeper anymore. Uh, they have, uh, uh, it's, com it's been completely uh, uh, automated, much uh, obviously cheaper to uh, maintain. Uh, the what was very critical about the Cabo Rojo lighthouse is that just west of the island, we're on the southwest, far southwestern tip of the island. This helped guide the sailors across around the uh, southwestern tip and up into the Mona Passage, which is uh, w which is very hazardous. Uh, that's the route that uh, the sailors would take to get from the Caribbean up to the uh, Atlantic Ocean on the uh, northern side of the island. Wow, that's wonderful and very informative. I've been here once before and I didn't have such a wonderful tour guide <laughs> such as you did. And while uh, our wonderful camera lady maybe takes uh, another pan of the area, I'm going to pose a question to Sandy. Sandy is a native of Cabo Rojo. She grew up here. And Sandy, I'm sure that you have wonderful memories of not only of this area, but of this wonderful lighthouse. So can you sh share maybe a childhood memory? Sure. Well, I absolutely love this lighthouse and all of us from Cabo Rojo are very proud of this lighthouse. Um, this is a place that any of us from this part of the island comes to frequently. And as, as uh, anybody from Cabo Rojo will always tell you, this is one of our favorite spots. So I used to come here a lot as I was growing up. Uh, I used to come uh, in grade school trips, and, and uh, when I was in high school, I came with my friends. We took hikes up here. And uh, unfortunately, when I was growing up, this lighthouse had gone into disrepair. And uh, as a result of that, it was most of it was boarded up. 
I mean, it's always been beautiful as it is now, but uh, it really needed some paint. But most importantly, you couldn't go inside the lighthouse. So one of the favorite things that, that uh, I used to do with my friends was we used to come up to the lighthouse to see if there's any way that we could peek into the lighthouse and see what was in it because none of us knew, ever knew, what it, what it looked like inside. But the problem was that the windows were, um, at that time, were all boarded up and there were some holes that you can kind of peek through, but the holes were high. So we used to come and, and uh, piggyback on each other to try to see if we could reach um, any open uh, openings and look inside. But none of us dared to do that because we used to hear that there were people that lived in there. And of course, I think this was all made up, but we were always afraid that we were gonna peek in there, see somebody and get attacked. So, uh, so one day I came with my friends and we were bound and determined to that all of us were going to take a peek inside. And uh, we were all a little, a little scared, but we got on each other's backs. We came up with a plan so that we could all take a peek inside. And if anybody saw anything, they had to yell and say, <laughs> and say you know, run. And, uh, and that's what we did. But each of us were able to take a peek and we didn't see really anything. Uh, except, except the last person, which was one of my friends, uh, he, did see, he didn't see anything, but he claimed he did. So he did say run, and all of us fell uh, at the time, and we really <laughs> hit each other, and we went running down, down the hill, which is quite, quite a ways to get back to the cars. So um, anyway, that's a nice memory that we always remember because we always wonder what it was like. And now we are very lucky because it has been restored. We're able to visit, visit it in the daytime and, and see inside. And it's, uh, it's beautiful. And I assure you, there's nothing living in there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for sharing that beautiful memory. And for those of you who come visit Puerto Rico, I know staying in the San Juan area is always popular. But if you can rent a car and take a trip out to the south western part of the island or the west part of the island there's beautiful beaches like Combate Beach and other beautiful cities like Mayaues and so it's a wonderful place to come and visit if you want another taste of Puerto Rico. So this is Tequina Iru of the Puerto Rican Cultural Center. Keep watching this space because we will be sending you more and more videos of the exciting things that we're doing here while I research our next play that will be debuting in December.